It's nice to believe Mother Nature is going to wait around for it to be convenient before it dumps a disaster our way. Unfortunately, that's hardly ever the case. Today we're talking about developing our emergency communication skills in less than ideal environments. There's often a disconnect between emergency communications in the amateur radio community and emergency communications for real people in the real world. And even though that's the case, we still need to get ourselves out in the field to develop our skills, to improve our skills, and to operate outside of our comfort zones. Oscar Hotel 8, Sierra Tango, November, Stroke Papa. So what you're looking at are deployment examples where I've taken my ham radio gear, my shelter, my sleep system, and everything else I need to deploy out in the field in less than ideal conditions. But hopefully you won't misunderstand the message. I definitely don't like being cold. I don't like being wet or have my fingers feel as if they're a step away from frostbite. But the whole idea of getting out in the field in less than ideal conditions is getting comfortable with the misery. Mother Nature's not always going to give us a break in terms of when it's going to dump a disaster on us, so we need to be prepared and comfortable with it if and when that time arrives. There's also a pretty big disconnect between advanced emergency communications and those people just getting started off in communications preparedness. My opinion on this is not to worry about it. You take what you have, where you are, and you start from there. It's literally taken me years to get to the level where I am and I still have a ways to go. With all that said, my journey in personal communications for preparedness started with the Yezu FT-817ND. The Yezu FT-817ND is still in my inventory and it's an important part of my personal communications preparedness. But this video really isn't about the Yezu FT-817ND. It's about motivating and inspiring you to get outside to develop your skills and get comfortable in less than ideal operating conditions. There's also lots of misconceptions about where we operate or how to operate. Personally, I can operate from my teepee tent, I can operate from my car, I can operate from my hiking trailer or out of a backpack. It really doesn't matter and it shouldn't matter for you either, provided you're comfortable operating in the worst possible conditions you'll find in your location. Here you see I'm operating from inside our Subaru Outback PSK31 with the Yezu FT817. In this next example, I'm operating JS-8 Call from a teepee tent above the Arctic Circle in Lapland. Now, even though you might be wearing shorts and flip-flops where you are, it's still important to get out there and get out of your comfort zone. Okay, so what the heck am I rambling on about, yeah? The point of this video is Winter Field Day 2019. Every year, the Winter Field Day organization puts on an event activating amateur radio operators in winter conditions. Yes, I know winter may be different where you are than where I am. But as I've already said several times in this video, the point is to get outside and develop or improve your skills. It doesn't matter what level your skills are at this moment. So, the Winterfield Day organization believes emergency communications preparedness and training for emergency communications shouldn't be limited to fair weather. Their goal is to inspire and motivate operators to get out in the field with their gear to gain valuable experience operating in less than ideal conditions. I have my own personal goals for Winterfield Day this year, and that's testing out a new shelter system. I'll also be testing out emergency portable power with my new solar generator and my power film solar panels. I'm also going to be testing the feasibility of a emergency communications digital net using JS-8 call from the field. And building a JS-8 network is very interesting for me because it has the efficiency of FT-8 with the usability of other modes like PSK-31. I'll also be operating completely off-grid without the benefit of the internet. I'll be using a GPS as my time reference and to keep everything all synced up. To be fair though, 
The only real concern I have is this being the coldest time of the year here at 65 degrees north. Minus 20 is usually the deal breaker for me, but let's see how it goes. There's this old saying about training as you fight, so I'm going to try to hang in there and get it done, but I do have a backup plan if it's too extreme. Disasters are unpredictable by nature, often striking when we least expect them. The goal of this video is simply inspiration to get outside our comfort zones, enhancing and developing our skills and preparation for most adverse environmental conditions we can experience throughout our lifetimes. Now with everything you've seen in this video, I'm going to break ranks a bit. The Winter Field Day Association expects us to focus on collecting points, kind of like a contest. I would suggest the points be a secondary objective, with your primary objective being on focusing on those areas where you think you can improve from a field communications perspective. As I said a few minutes ago, I'm going to focus on my shelter, my portable power, and a data network for JS8 call. Now, although the contest points seem to be one of the pillars of the Winterfield Association, the points are never going to be a primary objective for me. But I will use Winter Field Day to improve my skills and capabilities in the field. So, I really hope this training methodology makes sense to everyone, and I hope that you'll leave us a comment letting us know how you plan to deploy in Winter Field Day and what you plan to work on. If you're supporting the channel through Patreon, PayPal, or simply sharing my content, you're absolutely magnificent and I couldn't do it without you. For the rest of you, if you like what I'm doing, if you like the content I'm creating, consider leaving me a comment and a thumbs up to let me know. And if it's not too much to ask, share this video with someone or someplace where other operators might enjoy it. Rock and roll, guys. Thanks for watching. Ciao.